Today, we are going to talk about on the church and we are going to talk about our DNA. Have you ever heard about it? I'm pretty sure. And many people know and, and such as crimes that has been made 40 years ago. And because of the DNA, the scientists are were able to find out and to study to study about it and if you ever saw a picture of it it's like a stair little stairs where you can climb your roof but it's twisted have you ever saw the, the pictures and it's all made out of proteins 20 kinds of it that makes the DNA and the DNA, it's what makes you what you are. It's, what, it's your draw. And we, we all have in common as a human being. 90% of our DNA is equal to each other. And our DNA is... We, we share with the whole humanity. 99% we share our DNA. That's why we have... And because... And because of the racism, and this is all stupid because we are all equals. And it, it, that's the variety of God, so that all people shouldn't be blonde. Or, there is many kinds of people, and God wants that. But we have 99% of our DNA shared, and only 1% to have this variety of peoples and even though he would like to make a human being just one one kind but there is some variety when God made us and he likes that and God could have done the, the food just one food actually he made it but when you eat it, your brand is new. You don't need nothing else. You don't need sugar. You don't need, there is protein. There is everything you need in that food. That's perfect. But God wants variety. That's why He made many kinds of food that give us joy. Is a selfish God. He likes the pleasure. That's why He made us in a special way. So our DNA makes us what we are. And each cell that there is a core, inside of it there is the DNA. And the DNA is made of about three billions of elements, each one of that. And they are, our cells is always reproducing. Each seven year, you, you, you have a new skin. Have you ever heard that there is many dust in your, in your home? That's because of you. That's your skin falling down. They are becoming dust. You can study about it. That's, this is true. And to each cell that falls down before it dies, it produces many others. More, two more. Always becoming bigger. And it sends the DNA throughout our... I don't want to get into the biology itself, but we just make two new cells to be exactly the same cell as the one before. For example, when one cell of your finger dies and it becomes dust, or you lost that cell because you cut it, and then all of a sudden it comes back and they grew and they are gonna have the same identification because it's all in your DNA. And it's gonna come back as the same one. It's like just like making copies of it. There's two moments where it can go wrong. 
just like a, our printer here in church. And a girl told me that the printer is pushing the paper, it's grabbing the paper, and you gotta hold it. Have you ever thought about it? You have to do this to print 3,000 papers? And then if you do one wrong, then the next one is going to be even more wrong. So, the same way in our body, there's two moments that it can happen in our body. And that new cell that, that becomes alive, it should be alive just normal, but it is different and bigger. And sometimes there is a new color, it calls cancer, some are good, or signals, but the cancer is that cell that when they were made in copies, it wasn't perfect, the copy. And today we are going to talk about the, our DNA as a church, because the secret to have a blessed church as ours and keep it the blessing and keep the, the shape that God gave us to be is to keep our DNA and do not change once in a while a big church. I know many cases of church that has been blessing as no one was and when the pastor he retires and then comes a new pastor who does not have the same DNA, he, comes, he came from somewhere else. And then he receives a big salary and he tries to do something different in that church that he has learned in somewhere else. And then all of a sudden the church starts to die. It shrinkles because he is trying to do something different from the DNA of that church. That's why we must be careful on choosing the successor of the church. And sometimes they do not understand. The, they do not understand it. And we are going to talk the important qualities of the DNA as the human beings share their DNA in 99%, so the church, in 99% of the church, they share the DNA, which is the, the law of Christ. To be a truth Christ, there is, it must have a basis. Without it, it is not church. In the book of Revelation, the first three chapters, it tells the churches that you are not going to be church anymore and it shows them that they are not church anymore towards God, because God has taken away their light. The Word of God is not there anymore because they throw away they, the 99%. Without it, they are not church anymore. If you take it out, it's not a church anymore. And God gave us the DNA, and one of the elements it's that we must believe that there is only one God in three persons, and that the Word of God, there is no mistake, it is trustable. To our lives, we can trust on it. We can base our life in this book, and we are going to end up well. We must believe that Jesus it is the Son of God, one of the three. He is God. And to him was given the world to create and to reign over. And Jesus, so when the world has lost by its choice on the first sin from Adam and Eve, Jesus came, he himself became human, the creator became the creature, and he came to live between men. And at 33 years old, went to the cross. And if the church does not believe, it's not a church anymore. 
and He dies for all of the sins from all humanity. And the resurrection, that's one of the elements of the elements of the DNA of the Church. It is a the, the bill that has been paid. And each one of those who believe and who does not believe, but in order for us to become a son of the children of God, we must believe that Jesus is going to come back. You must believe that Jesus is going to come back. That's the part of the DNA of the church. And whoever does not believe is not a church. Now, if you think that's going to come back after the, the wars or before, there, that's not a problem. That's part of the 1%. So it's essential to believe that he's going to come back. Now, that there is 1% that it can change, that make one of us be blonde without dyeing their, ha their hair, taller, smaller, stronger, weaker, big nose, little nose, chins of all kinds, foreheads, hair. This is just 1%. And... In the church, God has been giving us the 99% that is, it is the law of Christ. And without it, there is no church anymore. And the 1%, it is the variety to make personality, different personalities with different appearances. And today we are going to talk about our DNA that has been made us what we are. Ah, it is not just the cell. It is the command, commandments on how it must do to survive and on how they should deal with the oxygen. And there is a taking letter that is sent throughout the DNA of each cell. And the same way in the day and day of our church. And today we are going to talk about seven elements of the DNA of our church. It is not all of it, but it is just seven, the most important. The first one is that our number one priority as a church and you as a member of this church, it is to love your God with all your heart, with all your strength, and with all your soul. The first commandment, it is love your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. It tells on Deuteronomy chapter 6, Listen, Israel, love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. The Old Testament has been written to the... so that we could trust that... testify that Jesus that came, it is the Jesus sent. He was written to be an example to us, but it has been made us very clear that throughout Jesus, the law of Moses, it is not to us anymore. He tells very boldly, so there is no more, there is no problem killing someone? Of course there is. Because in the New Testament, there is more laws than in the old one. But in the old, it was, we try to fulfill the God, to reach God, and now it's the opposite. We do it because we are connected to God. And in the Old Testament, they could have more than one woman, the man. And people cannot talk about it. Your wife is next to you. Don't laugh. The New Testament is different. Once a pastor didn't like the affirmation that I've told that the Old Testament was just an, an example to us 
And then she didn't like, and Christ, Christ is the end of the law, and she came to me and told me that, telling me that that wasn't right. And I and then I told, you want to come back to the Old Testament? And then your husband feel free to? You can marry many others. And then she told me, no, but if you're going to come back to the Old Testament, you, so you must not choose just what you want. Jesus has ended up the Old Testament. He was the only one to fulfill it. And, and when he did it, no one else is going to be able to do it. No one is going to go through God. Only if he get inside you. And you don't have to fulfill it because you have Jesus. And Jesus, it is the end of the law. But everything God wants to your life, as someone who lives in the time of grace, it repeats on the New Testament. It is for us. You must obey it. For example, love your God with all your strength. It repeats in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Jesus answered it. The first and the biggest com commandment, love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your knowledge. And somewhere else it says, with all your strength. So God repeats. And our first priority as a church is not to love the church. It is not love your husband. It's not your son or your family. It's not love the, the ministry of church. It is love God above all things with all your soul, with which means your understanding and your behavior must show the love towards God. That's why Paul says, find out what pleases God and do it. This is what, this is do what God wants. Romans chapter 1 or 12, I please that, that you, that you sacrifice your body, may your Make your body obey. This is your prayer. This is your this is your way to please God. And God wants you to conduct yourself as the New Testament teaches, because this is the first priority. Love your God, our God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. This is the first element of our DNA as a church. The second one, the second element, it is to be holy. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, without holiness, no one sees God. Without holiness, no one goes to God. That's why you must be holy throughout Jesus Christ. Or you are not going to get it. Without holiness, no one's going to see God. And without holiness in your life, you're not going to be able to see God. And the copy of your, of your DNA is going to start to change. And then once in a while, you're all messed up and your life is totally upside down. And you're part of the church. It's not the temple, it's not the building. It is the people. And when one person starts to do something wrong, it's there is a signal, there is a cancer that may destroy many others. In God's soul, it says that the second element of our DNA is to be holy. And be holy is two things. It is understand that you are special. You are different. You are separated by God to be as Jesus. When I was a child, I had a neighbor that when he got angry with me, he was a Catholic. And he was just those who believed Christ and those who were Catholic. 
was either you were Catholic or from the devil. And to those who believed in Christ, they thought they were to the devil. It was a big fight. And now that there is no, not this kind of fight, any, fight anymore. More or less. And I remember that my neighbor, when he tried to scream something bad at me, he would scream, you bug, you... And, I, and then I, I told her, that's your grandmother. But now I understand that he was a prophet. I was different from him. I didn't want to steal as he was doing it. I didn't want to take part in broke the glasses of the neighbors. I didn't want to do a kind of things that would, wouldn't be, be good to my relationship with God. And so that the persons in your, persons in your company may know that you are different and your school and your job, they are right, they are just. If they are, if they are coming after you, that's because may it be because you are doing the right things. Happy you're gonna be when you are persecuted, when you are right. That's a signal that you have God in your life. But the holiness also tells us that you are living without sin. But that's impossible, you may say it. If you have a goal in your life that holiness it is impossible, it is like to throw or aim, and you are hunting and you are aiming the birds, and the bird, I don't know, any kind of bird, and then he is up there if you sh aim at the floor. You're not gonna even succeed if you start with the not the thinking of that's not that we are not able to live without sin. Let me ask you something: Can you be one second without having sin? Once again, can you do it again? If you can't, that you are evil, man. Can you be two seconds without having a sin? Five seconds. Let's make it longer. One minute. Can you be it? Yes, we can. Then we can do 60 minutes, then one day. And our goal must be, I, we want to live a day without sin to you. Our DNA that God has given us don't you feel terrible when you sin? You feel dirty. You don't. You don't feel well. And then you are messed up because the Holy Spirit is there, telling you that there is something wrong. There is a copy that's not doing the right thing. Fix it. If not, you are gonna end up doing something that God does not want and then it's all upside down until no one sees it and God wants you to live and fight to a honor life on 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 16 be holy because I am holy son of fish it is a little fish and God is holy and we must be special, separated to God and people who fight to not sin. We want to have that as our DNA. And God has been given us a instrument that when we sin, and God wants us to fix it. That's why He gave us the forgiveness. And if we confess our sins, where can we find it? The versicles? If we confess our sins, First John chapter 1, verse 9. He is faithful and just to forgive us. And He has given us the tools to come back and fix once again to start 
to do copies right once again. And without holiness, no one's going to be able to see God. And so confess you and even he even give us look at it. It tells us on Hebrews chapter 12, be, watch out when someone offends you, go there and fix it. Because if not, they are going to start to do something bad. It's like a disease that can that make us feel wrong and, and many other peoples. You must be separated and holy towards God. So that fight, the sins in everything, in your sports, in your body, sexuality, in your job. That's why in the church we have character above talent. And then once a mother came to me that telling that her son was was all messed up but he plays the guitar and if you could just let him play in your church maybe he would fix we don't need talent we need holiness the kingdom of god is not made of talent there is many talents the devil was the most talent angel of them all and God needs character. Whoever God gives us, whoever has talent, God can give the, whoever has character, God can give the talent. The third element of our DNA as a church, it is much word, much word and being faithful to the word. In the book of John, chapter 17, verse 17, Prove them in the word and the, in the truth, so that your word is true. That's why in the church we has been make some studies of the Bible. And I know many churches in Brazil, but, but there is none that study the Bible as we do. I have a friend that study of the church in Brazil, especially those who has more than 2,000 members. There is none of it like it. They are big, but they do not know the word. And the people, it lacks the, the, the knowledge of the truth. That's why we must fight corruption. There, there hasn't been many believers that they continue we have, if you go to the jail, there is many believers as those who are not believers because something went on wrong. And then what failed was that the leader hasn't been making habit, habits of being full of the Word of God. And it is throughout, throughout, it, that we are full of the Holy Spirit. And then the, the word transforms us. It is trustable. It doesn't fail. You can build your life upon your, this word. And everything you do as the message of the last week, you are going to prosper. That's why this church has been prosper. Your family, your sons are going to prosper. Because we decided that it is essential to our DNA as a church. Each Sunday we study two hours and we want you to make part of it, that you study the Word, you know the Bible book by book, subject by subject, and even our children from three years to eleven years, they are going to study the Bible three times from cover to cover deeper and deeper and those who are 11 years old they know the bible more than some pastors not to our glory but to thank god that he has given us the grace that without the word you cannot progress you cannot prosper without the word and without the word of the god you cannot get you cannot grow towards god as the, as Jesus Christ. And then you study the word and then you you stay in the cult. It is not just music. It is not just song. 
it's a little bit of music and more work then when you go home what does your friendship group requires for, from you the study so why that's why our church it is blessed don't you forget it and then there is there were some people who left because of the study and then I, i'm sad because of but those who left it was much worse they said not this way it is just like a student who does not like to study and the word of god is what changes life and god has been given us the word for us to study even though throughout 100 years many people told that the the word if it was the same as it was with jesus told and moses wrote and those prophets they had many doubts and god only laughing because he had something to them let me write many books about how the bible changed and in 1948 they let a young pastor next to the dead sea fight thousands of writers of the old testament and you know and you know what is that the same way as our bible it is it's like just god rubbed the bible in their faces because not even a common uh, dot would be left in the word of god and god preserved and you can trust your life in the word of god you and you're gonna succeed so our dna asks ask for one and we have to the youngs to the couples because we understand that the word makes the difference in our life and the fourth element of our dna much love in john chapter 13 verse 34 new man may i give you it's not like it's not going to be the same as moses gave you a new commandment i give you love one another as i love you love one another and that verse 35 and they will all they will all know that you are my followers if you love one another and on john chapter 17 jesus prays about it john John 17:21 God I ask you that you make just make one that they become one as I am one with you so that the church may be just one and the element it is essential to the prosperity of the church to the growth of the church to the health of the church one of the blessings that we have here that we have made maybe 2000 people there is no division there is no there is no fightings and then when we find something we go there and act the same way when you see something different in your body that your dna is doing some copies wrong and then you go to the doctor and fix it the same way we have those churches who does not do it they destroy themselves because love and be united it is important and we must love one another and satan it is the king of fighting and then they he understand that when they fight he conquers and how many histories have you heard that of churches that lack of justice because of that and they cannot defeat the doors of the devil of the hell on psalms it says that wherever they are united there will be my blessing 
You know wh why you're a blessing? Because you have a he good health, just like an elephant. I don't know if elephant there is a good health. Anyway, anyway, you know why you're a blessing that much with a dynamic church that likes you? Because we are united, and where we are united, there will be my blessing. And at the end of the chapter, and there will be salvation. You know why 20,000 people accept Jesus Christ each year? Because the church, it is united. And we must preserve the DNA. We must not let come get inside. That is going to make it harder to fix the love. That's why we must forgive those. And the Bible says how to fix it. And then you go to your brother who made you unhappy and tell him what you've told me make me feel sad. And then he can forgive, as forgive to you. And then you bring another and then even if he does not accept, he must be excommunicated. Because sometimes you must cut it. A little dot, because it might be a cancer. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, make every disease, every take out. You cannot let it grow because it's going to end up being bad to everyone. And you must fix it. And But how does the nature human tell us? You don't go to the person, you go to your friend. And then you start to gossip. And then you are brother tell someone else and then all of a sudden there is a group a enemy of that what other group and then they create people who follow them just by the work of the hell and we must fix it that's why you cannot accept gossip and tell about someone else wait a minute have you ever talked about it to the person so let me let me call him let me call him to tell then you can call me and then they tell don't you do that but why are you telling me that god tells that you can't talk behind their backs you must tell him there he is look at it he wants to talk to you no 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 we as a church who is the church we we must hang up the cell phone, you must face it, you must deal, you must protect the, un the unity of being united as we have been. And we must continue that until Jesus comes back. So the, do not let the copy become wrong. Uh, when you uh, all of a sudden the church is going down. A church of much love and in these pandemic times it was a opportunity to practice the love and people to risk their health to take care of one another. It was a blessing to this church and God has been given us a opportunity to love our brothers. And we are going to be blessed because our DNA it is a DNA towards the desire of God. Number five. We believe that, that the church must do something with the best way they can. We have a new song. But it was a song that marked us because it's part of our DNA. We want to do our best. It is not be perfect, but your best. Give your best. If you are going to teach, do your best. If you are going to work, do your best. God wants you to do your best. And we talk as you should be doing, as you were doing to Jesus. Do your best. And we want that. We must, we must aim for that and strive for that. When 
a new family comes here without discipline, we want to help them to behave in the cold. There is some church that instead of having the work, they take all of the children, the little children, to, and go to someplace else. The children learn by copying and seeing. How are they gonna learn if they do not, if they do not have the opportunity to see it? It's like a children see another behaving well. I, I hope they do not start to fight it now. And then they ask them, "Is it this the way?" And then they imitate. That's the gift that God has been given us to understand that it is a church of order. And the biggest compliment that was given to us when the Olympics was trying to came to Manaus and they search us on how we deal with the people and they all the time happy and doing the work. It was a compliment. The world has noticed Titus chapter 2 in everything we must must tell about the gospel. That's why when we see a trash on the floor, you grab it and you throw in the trash and then wash your hands. You do something, you see something, a plastic tube broke and then you find someone competent. I saw that some door was broken because our God, it is like that. It tells people how it reflects the image of our Creator, that it is a God of order. That's why we have a decent code. That's why once in a while I don't like to do... I, when we fight, when we correct those, we do not get a good image. But when people start to talk in the cult, in a loud voice, I call them, I tell them. And then I give power to the to people, tell them, be quiet, to tell you, be quiet. Because God, it is a God of order. We are in the presence of God and we must be careful. And many other things, always striving for excellence. And our God, it is like that. And then we talked about number six, another element of our DNA. It was Titus 2.10, the last versicle, and our sex, sixth element, that we use interesting methodologies. On 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 9, to the Jews I became Jew, to those who did not, who didn't have the law, I became a Gentile, to the poor I became poor, to the wise I became wise. So Paul would change himself towards those who was trying to reach it. And then I kept looking that 70 years ago came to church from the England and then from America, then it landed on Brazil that where the believer would always wear a tie and even the pastors if they had money would, ha would wear a suit and there is some church to this day that there is something important in, in our DNA and that must change. It is a it's like a wall to a society, informal society. Then if you go to a culture where there is many, then it works. So we must adapt to our the culture and God wants us to use the culture to reach those 
And there, that's why we have we have we have many kinds of parties to to reach them. Even though as long as it is not seen and God teaches throughout the Paul that we have the freedom to celebrate the days and those we do not want and God gi has been given us that to use the the, sh the way that it works to reach peoples and look how God has been blessing us to continue our part and throughout this pandemic times we find out the virtual we would always land it, send it on internet but we did not have the goal to find some new people throughout the internet and then we are gonna start it and we are gonna have a whole team working on it that they are not able to come here so that they may have a group of friendship and they that they are able to baptize and to, and to study the Bible as we do. It is a new methodology and we are learning it as we are getting through it. Because next year we are going to need many people who are good leaders of friendship group through the internet and who knows many churches will be created because of the virtual church a new methodology and finally our last element of our DNA the work is to all Ephesians chapter 2 